We'll look at uh, Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So we see that the Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven, sent by his Father in heaven, to, to die upon the cross, be crucified for you and for me. Why? Because of our sins. The sins that we have committed that are taking us down to hell, God does not want us to go down to hell. And so that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be crucified upon the cross of Calvary, so that you and I could have opportunity to get right with God, to have forgiveness for our sins. And that can only take place through the once-for-all sacrifice of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. You see, God wants to adopt us into his family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God says, For ye are all the children of God by faith, in Christ Jesus. So we have to understand our sinful condition before the Lord, before we can be saved. Because if we don't have a need, well, we won't come to the Lord for our eternal salvation, will we? And so we have a desperate need of God's eternal salvation, forgiveness for our sins, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. What we need to do is this. Come in repentance toward God, Acknowledge my sinfulness before the Lord, admit that before the God of heaven, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's a wonderful thing to know that your soul is saved, and you're on your way to heaven. Now, why go down to hell when there's absolutely no need, my friend? You can be in heaven. God has made the provision for you and I to be right with him for you and I to receive forgiveness for our sins and to be at peace with God. You know, Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to emphasize the fact that it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way to be saved. If we're going to be saved, it'll have to be through the once-for-all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross, and our right response to that. You see, you can just uh, drive past or walk past, whatever the case might be, and say, I don't care, I couldn't care less. But that's a very foolish attitude, my friend. We must understand that we have an eternal soul inside of our body that leaves our body at the moment of death. And then where will I be five seconds after I die? God wants you to be in heaven, but where do you want to be? You've got to have a desire to be saved, my friend. You've got to have a desire to get right with God. And the only way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that wants to save you right now, my friend. This is an urgent uh, message. We must understand what danger we're in. If you're not saved, you're in a very dangerous situation. You're heading for the judgment of God. God does not want to have to judge you but he will if you die outside of Christ. Without Christ as your saviour, you are going down to hell. Just the same as I was years ago. I was going down to hell, and yet at the age of 17, I came to know the Lord Jesus as my saviour. Why? Because I understood my sinful condition and admitted that fact before God, and then I received Christ as my saviour. I just reached out the hand of faith and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And that can be yours as well. Right this very moment, wherever you are, whatever you've done, it doesn't matter. The grace of God can reach you where you're at. If we understand our sinful condition and admit that before God, then we can come to Christ and he will save us. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord 
shall be saved. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant but a son. This is if you are saved, you are a son of God. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, that's the issue, does God know you? How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labour in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preach the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh ye despise not nor reject it, but receive me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travaileth not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then that uh, sorry, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, ye are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. You see, if you want true freedom, you'll have to come to Christ. You'll have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Bible says, and thou shalt be saved. The ones that are truly free are actually the disciples of Jesus Christ. And the word of God says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I wonder, do you have freedom? Freedom in Christ. That's the only way that we can receive freedom through the Lord Jesus Christ and his once for all sacrifice upon the cross of Calvary. Remember, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried but praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour. He desires to save your soul from a long, lost eternity. Why wait any longer? You need to get right with God, and it's only through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that that is possible. In whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening. Have a great day. I wonder what will it be for you, heaven or hell? It all depends what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.
We'll look at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So this is written to the believers, the Christians who were uh, meeting at a place called uh, Ephesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I wonder, can you say that, that the Lord has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ? You can only say that if you're saved, if you're a child of God, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder, are you a child of God? Have you been born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So he's chosen us to holiness and that we would be uh, without blame before him in love. This is not chosen for salvation, but is chosen for holiness. Uh, having predestinated us uh, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of, the, of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You see, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ still has the power to wash your sins and mine away, my friend. This is why I'm here again this evening. I want you to know the Lord Jesus Christ is your saviour. Because if you don't know him, and if you leave this earth without the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be in hell. And God does not want you to go down to hell, and that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be crucified upon the cross of Calvary, that you and I could receive forgiveness for our sins, so that we won't go down to hell. God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, and your soul will be saved. That is the promise of God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his uh, good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Now we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You see, once someone gets saved, the moment of conversion, the moment, of, moment they get saved, they're sealed with the Holy Spirit, my friend. And the Holy Spirit comes to live within our bodies as believers in our Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder, is that the case for you? You see, well, then what happens is the Holy Spirit guides us and empowers us to live for the glory of God, that which we can't do in our unsaved uh, condition. You see, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And this is why any amount of works, good works, will never ever get us to heaven. Even keeping all the commandments that were written in the Bible, if we were even be able to do that, that would never ever get us to heaven. Now, it's obvious we can't keep those commandments. Only the Lord Jesus Christ kept those laws of God absolutely untarnished, absolutely spot-on kept by the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He knew no sin, did no sin, and in him is no sin. Praise the Lord for the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who has made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Yes, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom he also trusted. After that he heard the word of truth that which I'm seeking to preach unto you this evening, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Praise the Lord. Yep. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Uh, wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God and of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlight being enlightened, that you might may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness uh, of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Ephesians chapter 2. And you hath he quickened or made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, uh, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that is the devil, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. See, these people were saved now. They had been made alive in Christ. That is, they had spiritual birth. They were born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what you need, my friend, urgently. You need to be born again. You see, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so to be in heaven, we've got to be born again by the Holy Spirit of God. We've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to become children of God. And that's the only way. It's through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ that we can get right with God. And our right response to that. You see, we can just go past, we can just say, I don't care, I couldn't care less. She'll be right, mate. Say whatever you will. But the point is this, know this, that if you die without Jesus Christ, you'll be in hell. And God does not want you to be in hell, and that's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be your saviour. Is he your saviour? Have you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour? Or will he have to be your judge? It's either one or the other. Salvation or damnation? Heaven or hell? What will it be for you? It's all determined by what you do with the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, will either be your saviour or it'll have to be your judge. So you see here, we're in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, as I said, that is the devil, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation or manner of life in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. In other words, 
He's made us alive together with Christ. That is the believers, the Christians. Do you have spiritual and eternal life? This is the question. You need to come to Christ to be saved. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God, to enter into heaven. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I wonder, does that apply to you? Well, it only applies to you if you're a child of God, my friend. If you're a believer in our Lord Jesus Christ, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. That is, salvation is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. As I said, we cannot get to heaven by doing good works. Now, it's good to be a good living person. There's no nothing wrong with that. That's great. But it can never, ever get us to heaven. We've got to understand. We've got to come God's way. And God's way is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who, as I said before, was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. See, a believer will do good works as a result of their salvation. It's not to get to heaven, but it's as a result that they are children of God. That's why they do the good works. And this is what God wants for each one of his, his dear children. That we would do good works in the power of the Holy Spirit. So the glory will go to God anyway. You see, the glory is all the Lord's. The glory is all the Lord's because salvation is from the Lord. Salvation is of the Lord. And so the Lord will save your soul if you come to him. You know, the Lord said, Look unto me, all ye, look unto me and be ye saved. For I am God and there is none else. We've got to come to Christ to be saved, my friend. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God. Which God hath before, that is the good works, that God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That is the good works. As a result of salvation. That is the product of salvation. Wherefore remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is co called the circumcision. In other words, we as Gentiles are being, are being called the uncircumcision by the circumcision which is the Jews, uh, which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. But at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's you, if you're not saved. You have no hope because you're without God in this world. This is why we've got to come to Christ to be saved. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God. As I said before, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes we're far off are made nigh or near by the blood of Christ. You see, the blood of Christ had to be shed upon the cross of Calvary. When one of the, so the soldiers came and they saw that he was dead already, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and forthwith there came out blood and water. That blood still has the power to wash your sins away. God wants you to be saved, my friend. God wants you to be in heaven for, with him for all of eternity. But we cannot be there apart from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who is crucified upon the cross can be your saviour this evening. What will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? For he is our peace, that is, Christ is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us, that is, the petition between the Jews and the Gentiles having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, 
contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain or two one new man so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to you which are, uh, were afar off and to them that were nigh or that were near for through him, that is through the Lord Jesus Christ, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In whom all the building uh, fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit, that is, through the Holy Spirit. And so we need to understand that we have a need, we have an urgent need of God's eternal salvation. Now how is that even possible? How can we receive forgiveness for our sins? It's only through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. The one who died on the cross can be your saviour this evening, my friend. And it depends what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ as to where you'll be throughout all of eternity. It's either going to be eternity in heaven or eternity in a place called the Lake of Fine Brimstone where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. No need to go there, my friend. You can be saved by the grace of God this evening if you come in repentance toward God, as I've said, that is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. It's the absolute guarantee from the mouth of God himself. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why not do it now before it's forever? and eternally too late. Time is running out. You must get right with God. You know, the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Why? It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Yet God will have all men to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. The truth is found in the Bible, the Word of God. It's also found in a person. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Have you come in repentance toward God, acknowledging your sinful condition before him, and then putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Your soul needs to be saved. And the only way of salvation is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he shed for us freely upon the cross of Calvary. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, that is, on Jesus Christ is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Have you believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God? Are you a child of God through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ? See the heaven or hell, my friend, what will it be for you? It's all determined by what you do with the Son of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ will either be our Saviour or he'll have to be our Judge. One or the other, choose. You must make a choice. You must prepare to meet thy God because it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, yet God will have all men to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. Come to Christ this evening, my friend, and your soul will be saved. Repentance toward God, that is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and God promises you everlasting life through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe. 
on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, and thanks for listening. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord.